It's a multiple of situations that concur that are really interesting. And this is my hypothetical analysis of it. So literally, we left Cuba with a two week notice. We were in Cuba and two weeks later, we were out of Cuba. So there was no one uh, ever learned to speak any other language or prepared themselves to speak any other language. So I have to say that everybody in my family, in my immediate group, everybody speaks English who did not learn to speak English were my parents. Um, but I think what happened to us, we, so I came, I was six years old. My, uh, we arrived in 1971 to Miami. Um, it's, you have to understand Miami is still a Southern town at that time. It's not really a, a cosmopolitan city that we know for it to be. And so there's small town, there's small neighborhoods and areas where people could live. And we were a African-American family. That's how we looked. And so where we could live was very limited. So we were not necessarily living within the Cuban enclave, but we were living in the outskirts of that somewhere within the African American community. And I think that a lot of it has to do that while we remain close to the Cuban community, we were not necessarily within the Cuban community. And so um, enable for us to play, to interact, the, the immediate family that lived where we were living were all predominantly American. Um, they were predominantly uh, lower class, you know, pretty much maybe above poverty level. Um, and so there was a, there was another Cuban family. There was uh, a, and a couple of a, a white American family, and about maybe three to four African American family and one sort of Jamaican family. And we all kids, being able to to play together, had to use English as the main language. Um, I think a combination of that, also that my parents were working, both of my parents were working, and we were four kids that they had to support. Just came to the country, didn't have a you know, didn't have a training or, 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 or a business sort of oriented uh, background. Um, we were pretty much left to learn to be educated by, by the TV. Um, at that time in America is you have all these incentive in terms of public education on public TV. So I grew up like with everybody else with Big Bird and Schoolhouse Rock and all these uh, uh, Fat Albert, all these cartoons. <laughs> Wait, so there's all these cartoons that really begin to give us an understanding into American culture and the language. Um, and so I think that part of the reason that perhaps, because I, I mean, I go home to my family and we all sound the same. There isn't a difference between the way we speak. We all pretty much speak English uh, in, a, in a very similar way so that no one has a predominant accent. Um, and the combination of that, the combination also perhaps of living in New York for 20 years and not being continuously within the Cuban community have probably created an erosion. That's how I see it. It has uh, erased the, the, the intonation of that Hispanic uh, you know, vernacular.